In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about why people spin the block, why they double dip the chip, why they want to come back around when it's been a minute since they've been around. If that sounds like something you're into, keep on watching. Also, why am I in a robe? Because I'm considering making my own uniform. Like I said a couple of videos back, it's annoying for me to keep finding new tops to wear. I know it's not that much, but I think I'm going to make my own uniform and until then, I'm going to be wearing random stuff. This is kind of nostalgic because it's what I wore in my first video, why I quit modeling. If you remember, then you remember the robe. Before we get into the reasons why people spin the block, let's talk about why they're in your presence to begin with. This can be an old friend, old significant other, family member that you lost touch with or fell out with. And there are two reasons why you come back face to face with them. It could be unintentional because you run into each other at the store, at your place of worship, at a social event where you guys have mutual friends or family, or it can be intentional. They reach out to you or you reached out to them. And this can be direct or indirect. So direct would be like, hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. I'd like to catch up. When are you available to meet up? They could text, call, DM, they reach out to you directly saying that they want to get back in touch. Indirect would be, they see it's your birthday. Happy birthday. They see you got a promotion. Hey, I saw you got a promotion. Congratulations. They saw you got engaged. Oh my gosh. Congratulations on the engagement. They find an event or a reason to talk to you. And then they just continue to move the conversation to maybe meeting up, maybe having a conversation if that's what their motives are. I keep looking down because I'm like, this is a robe. Let me not <laughs> make it. Let me make sure everything's intact. The reasons. Number one, they miss you. They miss you in their life. They miss the friendship, the relationship, maybe not in, in its entirety, especially when it comes to a romantic or a significant other, an ex. They might not want you all the way back, like <laughs> get back together, but they just might miss having you in their life. Same thing goes for a friend. They miss you, but that doesn't mean they want to be best friends again like you were before. But at some capacity, maybe a friend that you see over every couple of months and that you at least have a casual rapport with. The second reason is that they miss the value that you provided in their life. Maybe you always had the best restaurant recommendations. You had a great recipe. You always knew where to shop, but that's the truth. Some people spend the block for something that you knew about or that you were privy to and that they can't remember off the top of their head. So they reach out like, hey, remember that place we used to go get the really good sushi? What was it called again? And this could be just asking for what they need or a segue, like I said before, an indirect way to try to get back into conversation, good graces, etc. Number three, they want to have a conversation. They want to have the conversation. They want to have that closure conversation, or at least discuss what it was that happened between you two that caused you to separate and stop talking. So maybe they want to meet up, say, hey, Let's talk about this thing now that time has passed, now that the feelings are out of the way and we can think more clearly, let's get into it and not physically and not fighting, but just let's talk about it. When you have an argument or a disagreement or falling out with somebody, it's very emotional. And when you are emotional, it's hard to be logical and clear headed. And instead of hearing the person out, you might be projecting or speaking from that place of pain. So after some time has passed, I know some people say, let it go, but sometimes you did let it go, but you still want to talk about, hey, remember when that happened? What was up with that? There's a way to talk about things that have happened in the past without being petty or holding a grudge. Reason number four is that they're over what happened. Sometimes you talk about it and sometimes you don't. It depends on the situation and the people involved in the situation. Some people want to talk about it before they move on. And some people would rather just let it go and I don't want to say act like it didn't happen, but just agreeing to disagree by leaving the past in the past and moving forward. Sometimes it's really difficult to get to the bottom or a productive, constructive conversation about the incident because so much time has passed, so many, so many emotions were involved that clouded your judgment then and still clouds your judgment now when you look back on it. Number five. You might think that you're over it or they might think that they're over it, but they're not. How can you tell? It kind of looks similar to number three 
where you think that you're ready to have the conversation, but when you do start talking, it does get heated, it does get emotional, you do get a little charged up. And if that starts happening because you notice that the person or you yourself starts getting really emotional, and I don't mean emotional because when you have the conversation after a long time, it's inevitable it's inevitable to feel emotion. You're gonna feel awkward and uncomfortable, maybe a little nervous and anxious. But let's say it was a heated argument that made you guys stop talking in the first place and you feel the same anger and hurt that is being thrown at you in a negative way, then that's a sign that they might have thought they were ready to have the conversation, but they're not. Or you, maybe you're talking to them and as you're talking to them, you're getting angry about the situation, angry about the incident, like you're having it all over again. It's a sign that you might have thought that you were ready. You might have thought that you were prepared to have the conversation, to talk about it, but there might be some healing that needs to be done on your part or on their part before you're able to come together and have a peaceful, amicable conversation. Number six is they're bored. Sometimes, especially in relationships or situationships, people get bored and they still have access to you. Your number hasn't changed in 10 years and they feel like hitting you up. It's not deeper than that. For some people, it's like, oh, I haven't talked to someone's in a while. Hmm, I have nothing to do today. Let me hit them up. It's nothing to feel special about in that situation. It's nothing to be like, ooh, I got it. They always come back to me. It's like, no, people shouldn't always come back to you. The people who are in your life should intentionally be in your life. That should not be something that just happens by chance, that they just so happen to call you today. It's like, no, the people who call you should be people who regularly call you, regularly spend time with you. So if someone still has access to you and hits you up when they're bored, you can usually tell because it's completely random. It's random and it's inconsistent. And when you guys do hang out, you don't hear from them again for a while until they get bored again. And the last reason, number seven, is because you didn't set the boundary. You didn't set the boundary of how much access they have to you. Did you block them? Did you tell them that you need space? Did you remove them from social media? It's important to set boundaries so not everybody gets to spin the block. It's emotionally draining to have people that you had really bad falling outs with to pop back up into your life. And to give it more context, think about somebody that you have not seen in years because there was an incident that you don't even like to think of now but the idea of running into them at the store would make you uncomfortable and you try to back up and hide behind the shelf. Hopefully they didn't see me because I'm not trying to see them or talk to them. Your ex-boyfriend, your ex-best friend, a family member who did you dirty, all three of them when you went to the grocery store today. It would be a lot, emotionally draining. And if they all wanted to talk to you, and if they all wanted to have a closure conversation, that day it would be a lot so that's why the last one number seven is to set the boundaries because you don't want to be accessible to everybody and being accessible doesn't necessarily mean blocking them it just means you're not as easy to contact you're not as easy to get in touch with and it's not acting brand new or too good it's just recognizing that you know maybe you're not ready for the conversation maybe you don't want to have the conversation Maybe you've been doing fine since you guys fell out and them spinning the block and wanting to talk to you again is causing you more stress and anxiety than it was when you weren't talking. And that's completely okay. So when someone spins the block, I'm not saying jump to conclusions. I'm just saying consider that one of these things might be the reason. You might want to ask them when they come back. Hey, like what made you want to reach out? What made you want to talk to me? What made you hit me up? And if you guys do decide to have that conversation, you can decide for yourself whether you want to rekindle the relationship or just reconcile. That will be next week's video, so subscribe so you don't miss it. Follow me on social media, it's right here. And until my next video, I hope you act accordingly. Be safe, bye.